and verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. All right? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, we have been sharing for uh, several sessions on this important subject, I shall not want, which is generally teaching us that God will provide for us one way or the other. And then we looked at about 20 or more ways by which God provides for you. God may provide for you through your father. He may provide for you through your mother. He may provide for you through your family. He may provide for you through your job. He may provide for you through your church. He may provide for you through your job. I mean, so many different things through the environment. We looked at all that. We can't go over all that. And then we've moved on under this same series to the next segment of the series, which is you shall build a house. Is that not so? All right, you shall build a house. Tell somebody, you shall build a house. All right. And so, um, I believe that God wants uh, you and I to build a house. Is that not so? And uh, he wants us, and I gave you seven reasons why God wants you to build a house. Uh, because uh, so many reasons which we cannot go over. You can get the tapes and be blessed. And so now we are on uh, the next part, which is uh, seven or ten steps to building a house. I'm teaching you how to build a house. Amen. Because I believe that God is going to help you to build a house or to build houses. Amen. Now when somebody uh, builds a house, he is often genuinely wealthy if he does not um, owe money on the house. So, it is the reason why properties and so on are called real estate is because a house is more real than a car. You know, a car, the moment you drive it out of the place that they are selling the car, the showroom, the moment it drives out, it's a second-hand car. Five minutes after leaving the showroom, it's a second-hand car. Try to sell it, it the price goes down, bah, it's, a, it's a used car. It's a home second-hand car. Hallelujah. So, when they say real estate, it's real. It's far more real. All right. So, countries which are wealthy have built things. Countries which are not wealthy have not built roads, bridges. Has, that is why uh, when people are campaigning sometimes, they show the bridges they've built. And they speak of the roads they've built. They are trying to show that they have produced some real wealth. You understand what I'm saying? They never advertise the cars they have because the car is not, a real, it's not real wealth. Because a car in a moment can vanish and it will not be important anymore. So if you are going to be genuinely wealthy, and I see you becoming genuinely wealthy. Amen. Amen. If you are going to be genuinely wealthy, right, you must aim in this life to build a house or houses, to have a house or have houses. All right? And I, I showed you from the Bible that it is God's will for you to have a house. I read to you scriptures where the Bible gives instructions that build houses, plant gardens. I read to you scriptures where Jesus said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, he was showing that any foxes had residences with uh, addresses and accommodation. Beds had. And, and, and so if even beds and, 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 and foxes had places to stay, he, the son of man, of course, should have had somewhere to stay, but he didn't for our sake. Because the Bible says he became poor that we might be rich. Can I have an amen? amen. All right, so it, it is your, a human right. I, I, I forgot to... Uh, check. I have the human right. I forgot which one it is. But you have the right to a place to live. You know, Article 19 of the Human Rights tells us we have a right to an opinion, which is something we don't like in Africa, in African politics. We don't like people to have opinions. But one of the human rights is also the right to have a place to live, to lay your head. All right? So it's something that God wants us to have. All right? So just as a means of recap, um, let's go through the first uh, step to building a house. What is step number one? 
to ask for and acquire wisdom. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 24. Everybody, please. Verse number one. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth distraction, and their lips talk of mischief. Verse number three. Through wisdom, through money, through loans, through donations, through gifts, through what? Wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding, it is established. Now, after you've roofed your house, you've put on the terrazzo or the tiles or whatever you have, verse 4 becomes very important. It says, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Amen. Now, the Bible is telling us here that, you know, he's telling us here, he's, he's disabusing our minds of something we have all thought of for a long time, that, you know, it's rich people who build houses. You've got to be a rich man to build a house or to have a house. Well, I am not God, and I'm not old enough to become sort of like a wise man who is distributing wisdom or giving wise sayings. No, 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 I don't, I don't consider myself to be that at all. I just consider myself to be a preacher who knows nothing except what the Word of God says. So my, my duty is to share with you what the Word of God says, and then even if it's contrary to what I think, my duty is just to tell you what is there and then, and then leave it. My duty is to agree with the Bible. My duty is not to agree with my thinking. My duty is to believe what I'm seeing, learn something from it, and, and, and teach it. Amen. And the thing is saying, the book is saying, that by wisdom is a house built. In other words, Ghana can be built by wisdom. And not necessarily by the donations we are having. In fact, on the contrary, upon all the donations Ghana has received, for which our ministers proudly come on TV and announce all the donations we have and the inflows we, have been, we are receiving and are about to receive, and the donations from the German government and the Danish government and the Belgian government and American government and British government and Japanese grants and French loans and soft loans and grants and upon all these things we've been receiving, Ghana is not being built. Uh, last week I was driving on, I was driving in Kaneshi with some brethren and I said you see the road that we are driving on I said if we turn right or left it after 10 meters it will turn into dust apart from the main road so we're driving I said turn right so they turn right I didn't know the road I didn't know where as soon as we turn right straight into the, as if I was pro, a professor, straight into dust, dusty sand roads in the middle of Accra. Our roads are so bad. We have, of course, relative to some African countries, we are better off. We are better off than many places. I'm not saying, and the high, not some of the main roads have been built. I'm not discounting that. But I'm saying, you turn off. Turn off the Kaneshi Malam. Just turn right, anywhere, right or left. And start moving towards your house or towards anywhere. Kaneshi, turn right or left. So, our country still needs to be built. But we are used to the dust. And we are used to the sand. So now, and the potholes. Potholes is normal. In fact, if, it's, if there are no potholes, it's rather unusual. It's like you begin to ask, does the minister of so-and-so stay in the area? <laughs> so we need wisdom in Ghana. Amen. Not money, wisdom. Amen. I don't believe Ghana is poor. Neither do I believe Ghanaians are poor. We have enough here to make ourselves blessed. 
So dear friend, from today, believe what I'm saying. For you, even if the whole country will not listen to what we are saying, you listen to what I'm saying. By wisdom, your house can be built and rebuilt. Take it from me. Don't tie yourself to a certain way of thinking. Otherwise, you will be poor. You will always sit there. If I was like this brother, I would have, my father would have given me something and then I would have built a house. If I was like this person, uh, this one would have given me money and I would have done. You keep on and on and still it doesn't change. So believe what I'm saying that by wisdom, a house is built. So now, instead of saying, eh, I don't have money, eh, I don't have, ask God for wisdom. That's the first step. Ask God for wisdom to build. Because the Bible says, by wisdom, a house is built. Simple. By understanding, by knowledge, the rooms will be filled with precious things. How many want precious things in your houses? I see precious things entering your house. Instead of having to queue outside somebody's uh, black and white TV in the area, you can have a TV in your house, color television. Instead of having to queue at a toilet. Many of us queue every day. You see, you can't know where somebody has been early morning by looking at how he looks when he's coming to church. No, no, no. Some of the most beautifully dressed people, you, you don't have an idea what is happening in the real life situation. Oh, yes. A large part of our crowd don't have this area for it. There's no toilet in the houses. That is why it is paradoxical and ironical that we build a toilet across the road there for the community and it's closed. It's not being used. Let's not start on that. Somebody will say it's politics. But it's opinions. Article 19. Don't forget Article 19. <laughs> All right. What's step number two to building a house? Make building a house an early priority in your life. As a young person, decide to build a house as a young man. Amen. Why? It's in the Bible. Solomon was the wisest person on earth. It was one of the first things he did to build a house for God and to build a house for himself. Now you see, as you wait and as life goes by, things become more and more difficult. You can ask the older brethren amongst us, they will tell you, things don't get easier. Things don't get, some, sometimes it gets easier, but sometimes you see, as you grow, all sorts of other commitments come up. And so when you make it an early priority in your life, you'll be surprised at what you are able to do. I, I, if I had been a student, if when I was a student, I knew what I'm saying now, I'd have built a house as a student. Because you see, my father gave me more money whilst I was a student than what I earned as a doctor. I don't know whether it's because the doctor's money was so bad. But I was, I was, I was having more money as a student than as a doctor. So if I thought, I never thought about it. I thought about, I, I earned money, there was a time that I won a prize. I, I, I won a lot of money. But I didn't think about a house. I, it didn't occur to me. I didn't know that I could have as an early prize. I would have bought a piece of land and I would built a, built a house. By the time I had finished school, if anything, I thought there could have been a roof. In the University of Science and Technology, many of the students are doing business. But when you know that it's something you can do, it's something you can achieve, you start to go for it early, early. The Bible said, before the evil days come. come on. Have you heard that word? Turn to Ecclesiastes, I'll show you. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, number one. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Amen. So there are times when what we call evil days come up, and God is saying, early priority, Pastor Jacob, early priority, Pastor Tho, early priority, Adina, early priority, early priority, build a house and houses. 
Amen. Build it. God is telling you, build. Think about it. You can have it. You can do it. You can do it. Step number three. Avoid following after pleasures. Is that the last point you have? Now, pleasure is something that takes away your ability to build. Because it costs a lot of money to go to papaya. If you calculate it, what you eat at papaya can buy a whole chicken. How much is a chicken? A whole chicken. 19,000 CDs. 20,000. She bought her chicken at 19. Why are you arguing? She bought at 19,000. And how much is papaya? 12,500. Minus the drink. Plus the drink is 16,000. So you almost have a chicken. Transport to papaya, how much? 4,000 CDs for transport. So 16,000 plus 40,000 is 20,000. You've got a whole chicken there. Now, how many days will it take you and your family to eat one chicken? Only two days. Hey, you are a fancy, eh? <laughs> I think she's a fancy, so that explains. <laughs> I think you are eating all your money. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so let, let's be serious. So the point that I'm trying to make, the point that I'm trying to make is that you need to decide not to spend all your money on pleasure. Amen. Restaurants, dropping when you could take trotro or you could walk. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. NBC have made pavements, pavements so that you can walk on the sides of the roads. So use those NBC pavements. I'm campaigning for them now, isn't it? You can walk. You, can, you see, there are a whole lot of things you do that help you to save money when you decide not to go for certain pleasures. Sometimes you see some businessmen who, who don't have money. They are traveling business class and first class. And you wonder. They are buying expensive uh, 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 designer clothes, boutique. How much is a dress in a boutique? Some of the most beautiful dresses are cheap ones. And that people don't know. The heavy ones. Sometimes you just buy inside and you just buy. My wife is an expert at buying such things. Sometimes you see her dress, how much is it? One pound. <laughs> She's very good at that. She discovers every market everywhere. When I was in Korea, I, she found a market. I said, I'll find this market here. She found it. Everywhere she knows how to move along. So people say, hey, hey, let me shop for you, Charlie. And I'll have a thousand dollars back. Hey, hey. When you ask if I know, ten dollars. One ninety nine. Beautiful. And my wife, she dresses well. She's like a princess. <laughs> I'm trying to score some points here after I check. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So you must learn not to waste your money on pleasures. We read a verse. What verse did we read? Proverbs. Proverbs 21. Let's read it. Verse 17. All right. Proverbs chapter 21. Uh, verse number what? 17. Let's read it together. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. And he that loveth wine and oil shall not, shall what? Not. May not, shall not be a rich man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
All right. So we want to move on to the fourth step towards building a house. And the fourth step is the step of frugality. Frugality. Now turn with me to the book of John and we want to read chapter number six. Frugality. Now to be frugal means to, um, to do what? To spend wisely, to use things carefully. Is that not so? And we want to read from um, John chapter 6, verse number 1. And after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee. Verse 2, a great multitude followed him. Verse 3, Jesus went up the mountain. And verse 4, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And verse 5, and Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company unto, come unto him. And he saith unto Philip, now this must have been to test Philip because he obviously knew everything. Philip, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? In other words, will we go to, don't mind your wife, chop bar, or will we go to McDonald's, or will we go to Steers, or where are we going to have food to eat? All right, verse 6. And he said this to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, verse 9, There is a land here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? You see, they wanted Jesus to close the service. So they were bringing all the funny things to say, though there's nothing, only a man here who is selling five pieces of bread and so on. And Jesus said unto him, make the men sit down. Now there was so much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Do you know what is 5,000? I'll show you what is 5,000. You know the Accra Sports Stadium? You know the Accra Sports Stadium? Huh? Accra Sports Stadium. You see the new place the NDC part, the one that they just built, the new one, the big tall one around near the conference center, the up part, all those chairs. You know, I was at the stadium uh, last week and I was counting. All those chairs, about 6,000. There's about 600 for a section and about 11 segments. So about 6,600, something like that. That's 6,000 people. So you can imagine when Jesus is feeding 5,000 people. You can imagine he's feeding half of a stadium. So, make the men sit down. Verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves. Hallelujah. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples gave to them that were sat down. And likewise of the fishes that was many. And, and when they were filled... He said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, this is Jesus exhibiting frugality. Now, I have thought about frugality and I wrote a little book on frugality, which I will suggest for everyone here to get a copy of that book. Now, in that book, I teach extensively about how you can be frugal and advance and become, I, I call it a book that if you have, it will help you to become a billionaire. Now, anybody who is able to get those principles will become a billionaire. And our time is up. I must close. Thank you for watching Mega Word. God bless you. Uh, we'll be back again. We'll continue right from here next time. God bless you. Put your hands together. All right. We want to start again. Welcome to Mega Word. Hallelujah. Um, as I was saying, as I was saying, as I was saying the last time, we are talking about frugality. Amen. We are studying how Jesus Christ took 5,000 people to a restaurant and he fed them. Now, I want to dare you to take me to the restaurant tonight and I'm coming along with 50 people. I see, I know there were many people who said, oh, Bishop is saying, take me to the restaurant. A lot of people said, oh yeah, oh yeah, I can take him, I can take him. I'm coming with 50. In fact, I've made 100. 
Let's take a hundred people somewhere and feed them. Don't even bother to take them to a restaurant. Just even take them to your house. So we eat what you eat at home. Nothing special. Hundred tonight. Let's see how much it's going to cost you. It's, it's a fortune. But Jesus took 5,000 people. In other words, he had the capacity to feed 5,000 people one time. Even weddings and, and funerals and things like that. You don't feed so many people. 5,000 is a lot. And yet after that, look at what Jesus said. He said in verse 12, he said that when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. In other words, pick up the pieces and use the fragment. Twelve baskets. Every apostle is going to eat one basket for one week. Peter had one. James had one. John had one. Matthew had one. Bartholomew had one. Everybody had a basket of crumbs. Judas had one basket. They were going to eat it till the end of the month. Anybody who is going to be rich, do well, is somebody who counts his pennies. You see, you look at your money and say, I'm waiting for the big one. But the big one, it doesn't just come. You see, we don't value little things. We leave our lights on. We leave the water running. We leave the soap in the water. We throw away food. Food. We throw away food. I always remember as a child, my mother would say, there are ch children, and I used to argue with her, she said, there are people in so and so, and I'll tell my children the same thing now. I said, there are children in Rwanda, and they give me the same argument that I also gave them. I said, what has it got to do with me if there are children in Rwanda who I cannot have food? What if I eat it? How does it affect the children in Rwanda? But all those things are an attitude. Leave the lights on, leave this on, leave the, all those things add up to be big money. That's right. And a person who counts pennies will be rich. When we started building this church, the Lord told me, look, count your pennies and you will be okay. We didn't have, you see, people look at us and say, hey, they print money. We don't print money. There's a printing press, I know, probably that print money, because we are see always new, have you got any money? Look on it, you see the dates. They are printing money all the time. But we don't have any printing press. But we count our little offerings. One day we were paying somebody, one of the people who supplied us with blocks, we paid him with coins. At that time, about 100,000 CDs coins. We gave it to him. He looked and said, no, I said, oh, what? You cannot refuse legal tender. This is legal tender. You have to receive his money. We've counted all the pennies in the church and we have given them to you. And he was trying to say, no, no, this money, if you don't like it, then that's as far as we are concerned, we've paid. In my office, we have a system which we struggle to, to maintain, but it's still, it's, it's, a, it's a policy. If the phone bill goes above a certain point, we share. You see, where people are rich, you find frugality there. Switzerland, you see, we have a lot. We, we, Switzerland, I remember when I would go to my grandmother over there. You, you, if you are in one room, the light must be off at the, at the room before. Everywhere light is off. Only where you are, the light is off. But in Ghana, if you are there, light on everywhere. And in fact, this thing about putting lights on for security. You see, we have lights on all the time. Personally, I believe that when it's dark, it's more secure. <laughs> you see, because if you are a watchman, if I was a watchman, I would turn off the lights. Because, you see, when you turn off your light, your, your eyes have got two parts, the uh, rods and cones. And the rods start to work after some minutes, so you are seen in the dark. You know, have you noticed when you turn off the light or something, you begin to see. So you, you are ready. Your eyes are seen. And then other somebody jumps in, he can't see. You are seen, he can't see you. <laughs> Scientific uh, analysis. So it's better that the lights are off. But anyway, in Ghana, we light all the lights on. Everything on. The other day, somebody left, just on, uh, two nights ago, Friday, somebody left the lights on over there. I'm writing a letter to the person, warning the person, the person who is in charge of that. 
leave the lights on, whatever it is, and so on, you are going to, we are going to start paying for things. And all those things will be counted. We don't just employ. Look at how many people. How many people do you have in your church? Maybe 100? No, not even 10. We don't have a lot of, so many people employ. You pay this, pay this, pay this. Pay this. few people. Frugality means you are counting even your pennies. That is what makes you rich. That is what makes you build houses. If you were to start, and you see, when you start to build, it forces you to be frugal. You don't just throw money away. I always tell you, when Pastor Eddie, before he had a beloved and before he started thinking about marriage, he was just spending money. When he sees my, my wife, that's what she was like, my beloved, he would buy fixed things for her. Fix all of He was always buying food for us. Well, he didn't have a vision. <laughs> but when he saw his own beloved and he was going to buy, he changed completely. <laughs> He used to take us to Mandarin restaurant, a young man, Mandarin restaurant. He'll fix, oh, me, me, I'm being blessed, boy, being blessed, boy, cry. <laughs> but he has changed all those things now. It's a long, first said it's a long time, sister. <laughs> <laughs> you see, as soon as you start to build, you are forced to really calculate things. Why would Jesus tell them to gather the crumbs when he could afford to feed so many people? You have to be able to count, to check. Sometimes you see me preach, I say, turn off the light. What is going on? This and that. This is important. That's right. We have to value little things. That's right. Little things. Little things. They are important. They all add up. Our churches, you see, our churches, people say that, where do you get the money from? All our churches, everywhere. Small, 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 small. We add all. I asked one pastor, how much did you get for your offering? 5,000 CDs, two offerings in the church. We, li- we like it. We will add it. Little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Amen. Are you listening to me? So frugality is a key. The next key is humility. Now, why do I say humility? Because to be humble... To be humble, you need to be humble in order to build. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. And let's read verse number 48. Or verse 46. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on a rock. Now, notice verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Amen. Now listen to me. If you build a house, uh, Mr. Johnson, can you please come? Give me a microphone. Quick, quick, give me that mic. Uh, If you're building a house that costs about 30 million, uh, is, there, is the foundation an expensive uh, thing? Yes, it's very expensive. Uh, 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 give me the microphone. This is a builder. Yeah. It's so anything expensive. he says is true. Okay. It's very expensive. Hello? Give him some volume, please. It's very expensive. Very expensive. Yes. Is it a very, really expensive part of a yes, house? Yes, it is. Very expensive. Yes, it is. About how much? It will take about uh, 30% of the entire cost. 30% of the entire cost. The man is. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Say the truth. You yes. should cross your heart and shame the <laughs> yes, devil. I am. Okay. He's a Christian. He says that it's going to cost about 30% of the cost of the house to build, to do a farm. Now, this man built his house without a foundation. But would it be faster? Yes, very, it will be very, very fast. It will be very fast, isn't it? Because as soon as you lay, start laying four days, you are already at this three days. You are here. If within one week you are at lintel level, you are roofing. <laughs> Is it not true? People will come and see your house and be happy, isn't it? They'll be That's impressed right. that you've got a great house. Oh, That's you right. just, one, two, three, you know, you are, all right. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. Builder. Now, if you build your house without a foundation, everybody's going to be impressed with you. In a short while, people are going to say, wow, yeah. look at your house. Yeah. Man, you are great. You have this, you have that, you have this, you have that. But after a while, when the rains come down and the floods rise, So you need humility to be able to stay without impressing people for some time. And that is one of our difficult things. We want people to be impressed with us all the time. We want people to look at us and say we are great. We want people to admire our houses, admire our cars, admire everything that we have be long before the time of admiration comes. Look at our church building. We've been building for years. We moved in here. We had conventions here. We've been building all along. And through it, we could have finished it quickly, stolen money, borrowed money, done whatever, but we built slowly, slowly. When I moved into my house, there was no even a louver. Many of you can, I can show you pictures. Nothing. It was, hello, just raw. Uh, one of my pastors moved into his house, no light, no water, but he was in, He called me and said, I'm just calling to tell you that I'm in my own house. I said, praise the Lord, congratulations. No struggle. Amen. But you see, it's not impressive. It's not impressive. I went to somebody's house. He didn't have anything in his house, even a chair. He just had just a, a one old chair. But I realized that he was in his own house. You see, it takes humility to be able to live as though you are even poor, as though you lack for some time, so that you genuinely acquire a real house. It takes, it takes humility. Sometimes you have to stay in a particular place. I, stay, I stayed in my father's hotel room for three years, because I said, I didn't want to rent a house. My God said that when I move, I would like to move into my own house. So I stayed in the room with my wife, and I gave birth to two children with two house helps. We were all in one room. Hey, how is it possible? Is there are ways of doing things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are you around? Are you listening to me? I am saying that unless you are prepared, and people will say, people will say, ah, why, 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 why? I remember when I moved to my house, somebody, one pastor said, oh, why? Why do, why do you stay there? What are you doing? I said, oh, I know what I'm doing. I like it. I like it. Uh, people were not impressed with me. I used to drive my old Renault 4 car for a long time. People were not impressed when I arrived. And you see other pastors with their big, big cars and so on. It's like, who is this guy with his push and pull? Don't try to impress people. Be humble. People don't have to think good, well of you. But when you gradually build, a time will come when, when you are there, they can't afford, they can't avoid seeing you, recognizing you, knowing that you are there and your wealth is real. Everything that we have by the grace of God, we don't owe. I keep teaching you not to owe, which is the next step to building a house. Avoid borrowing. Now let me show you somebody who borrowed something to build a house. Turn to Second Kings. And we are just ending soon. <laughs> My timekeepers. Second Kings chapter 6. Quickly, quickly. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight. Okay? We're going to build a house. Verse 2. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Verse 2. Let us go. He said their house was too small. We're going to build a house. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, columns and beams, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. Were they not trying to build a house? And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Now they had gotten into the process of building a house. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried, 
and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Amen. And therefore he said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. Amen. Now notice here, here was somebody building and he had borrowed something in order to be able to build. Now the whole world is oriented towards borrowing. If you had borrowed money in this economy, as the city was plunging, you, you, you will have running stomach at home every day. It is possible to survive without borrowing. Only that it will be slower and you will not impress a lot of people. People will not be impressed with you because you will, not, you will look poor for some time. Lighthouse, we tried to, God has protected me from borrowing. We tried to borrow from the bank. They said, we can't lend to you because you are a church. If something happens, we can't sell your church. I said, oh, you can't sell it and use that. They said, no, 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 we can't sell it. So we were we prevented from, from borrowing. Every bank said no. So long ago, that idea left my mind. No borrowing. And as we stayed, they don't have anything like, this month you have to pay this, this month you have to pay this month. It's nothing like that. I'm free. When I lie on my bed, free. Is it not great to be free? But many businesses are not free. All the things they are doing, loans, 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 loans. loans. If there's a shaking tomorrow, and the shakings have started. So ladies and gentlemen, you can do things without borrowing. Little by little, but surely by surely, you can do it. If you build your house upon the rock with humility, say, this is what I have, at least it is better than living in somebody's house. I am teaching you that it is possible. Of course, some people can close their minds, eh, he dear, he has got this and that, that is what. No. That's why you are being excluded. That's why you will not build a house. You particularly, you will not build a house. You, you will not, not build a house. But those who believe what I'm sharing, their hearts are open, their spirits are open, they are going to receive it and they are going to walk in it and God is going to make it possible. Yes, it may be a boy's quarters. I went to one of my pastor's houses, he built a little boy's quarters. Way far away, small bus quarters. He one, two. I said, Congratulations, my brother. And slowly, slowly, you will see one day, you will see the person he's built. He will build the main house and he'll be in it. And it will be a big thing. And you'll say, Eh, you are stolen money. And I said, No, no, don't say that. You should have been the person when the person was moving to the room. When the no road there, there's no light there, there's no But the person has built his own. That is what I have. I would like to be there. And all the money that he has, he'll use it to build there. I'm teaching you to build a house. God told me to tell you to teach you to build a house. God told me to teach you and inspire you to build houses. In, in Africa, we don't build things. Go to Europe, go to Japan, go to Asia. You see, they are build, building skyscrapers. Look on CNN. Every time, you know, they always show a building as a symbol of a country. Have you seen those buildings with there's some kind of arches like that? That is Sydney, Australia. Malaysia, they have these two towers. When you see it, you are seeing Malaysia. New York, you see all those high buildings with lights. Always they show the buildings that that particular nation has built. Africa, if they show Ghana, what do we have to show? <laughs> Blaster Square, okay. So Blaster Square, I agree. But who built Blaster Square? Kwame Nkrumah. Auntie Philippa, who built Blaster Square? Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah was one of the building leaders we had. He built a lot of things. When he went, we've not been able to build anything. He built UST, built Tema Motorway, Harbors, Winneba, uh, whatever, secondary schools. He built things, and that made us Akosomo Dam. We have used it up to now, until it got finished. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. Are you there? You've gone home. I am telling you to build. Take it, take it out. You are hearing an angel appearing to you and saying, build. 
arise and build. You can build. Love, you'll be surprised you can build something. When you calculate the money you've eaten. <laughs> Look at this lady here. She's going to eat one chicken in two days. One chicken in two days. And uh, she, she's a real fanty. Four people. Yeah, she's arguing here now. Amen. I believe in building a church, but I believe in building, build your own house. And then when you finish, start the next one. When your children are getting married, you share the houses to them. Say, uh, this one is for your wedding. You don't have to bring them glasses and uh, clocks as a father. No. A father shouldn't give clocks and glasses. Give them real estate. How many are believing God to do that? Real estate. Real, real estate. Not artificial estate, Dr. Joe. Real. You say, my son, you call your son. Say, my son, Kofi, or whatever he's going to be called. You say, my son, Kofi. I have seen your wife that you have married, Geraldine. You are going to marry her. And uh, uh, go to uh, Domi Estate, house number 24. When I was 33 years old, I built it for you before you were born. Or even whilst you were three years old. That's your wedding present. No glasses from me, no clocks. Take number 33, uh, Domi Estate. It will happen. You shall build a house. I say you shall build a house. You shall build a house. You shall build a house. A house is better than a car. You shall live in a good, your own house. And you fill the house with good things. Chairs. Tables. Swimming pools. Grass. Lawns. Garages. Garag build a garage before you get the car. What's the use of the car that is parked outside? <laughs> tell the person next to you, you shall build a house. And <laughs> tell the person sitting there, my house will be nicer than yours. <laughs> tell the person, I feel that I will build before you build. Hallelujah. Well, our time is up once again. Thank you for watching Mega Word. God bless you and see you next time. Stand to your feet. All right. Oh, hold somebody's hand and tell them, I feel you are buying cement now. I feel that you are buying cement. Instead of buying chicken, buy cement. You know something? I want you to relax. Decide not to impress anybody again in this life. Decide not to impress. If people are not impressed with you, it's their problem. You, they, you, are, you are impressed with yourself. How many are impressed with yourself? As you are. Yeah. If you move into a house and the house is uncompleted or you are fetching water from a well or there's no light, you are using can or whatever, but it is your house and people are not impressed, be impressed with yourself. Me, I will congratulate you for that. That's a great achievement. Tell the person next to you, cement, not chicken, not chicken. <laughs> now you see people who, you see people buy a meat pie. They can say, give me two malta and one meat pie. Give me one, uh, you see them, uh, trophy, uh, they are malta, oily, domedo, different things. I mean, 
eating away your house. Eating your... Next time you see somebody eating lunch, ask him, are you eating your house? By the way, are you eating your house? Tell the person, I won't eat my house again. I don't know. Some people are eating their roofing tiles. Some people are eating their kitchens. They are eating their floor tiles. You've eaten all. Roofs have been eaten. Roofs are in stomachs. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and thank the Lord for his word this morning. Father, we thank you for your word in the name of Jesus. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, thank the Lord that you shall build a house because God will provide for you. God will provide for you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Keep us strong in your presence as we decide to be builders. Amen. As every head is bowed, every eye closed, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to just raise up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you specially. If you're watching by television, you want to be born again, you can pray with us. God bless you. Lift up those hands. At the back, lift it up high. I'm going to pray. I see so many. I lift it up high. Pastor, pray with me. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to God. Okay. I see all your hands all over this place. God bless you. If you've lifted up your hands, I want you to come from upstairs, from wherever you are. Come to me in front. I've come down. Come to where I am and I'm going to pray specially with you again. All right, just stand right here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come, come from where you are, wherever you are. Just come to the front. Pastor, pray with me this morning. I want to give my life to God. I want to be born again. I want to, I want to take Jesus as my Savior. God bless you. God bless you. I encourage them as they come. Quickly, please. I encourage them as they come. I encourage them as they come. I surrender all to Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Some more people are coming. Please come quickly. Coming to give their life to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Just... I want to pray a very important prayer with you. I want you to close your eyes. Just close your eyes and everybody to close your eyes and join in this prayer. When I lead them in front, I want you standing in the congregation also to say this prayer. And as you believe, this prayer is going to apply to you as well. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. This afternoon. This afternoon. I humble myself. I humble myself. And I come to you. Just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. This afternoon, I bow my knees to Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save my soul. At this very moment, I repent and I receive you as my master and my savior and my Lord. Thank you, Father. Please write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Now, those of you in front of me, I want you to take this prayer that you've prayed very seriously and we want to encourage you to come back to church next week and then keep coming and I believe that you'll be blessed.